Have you ever wondered how a hydrogen bomb works? It's a story that takes us back to the mid 20th century, a time when nuclear weapons were at the forefront of the world's attention. The Cold War was in full swing and the race for nuclear dominance between the United States and the Soviet Union was heating up. Enter physicist Edward Teller, often dubbed the father of the hydrogen bomb. Teller was an advocate for a more powerful weapon than the existing nuclear arsenal, one that harnessed the power of nuclear fusion. His idea was initially met with skepticism, but Teller's persistence led to the concept of a super bomb, a weapon that would dwarf the destructive power of any before it. The United States was the first to successfully test a hydrogen bomb, codenamed Ivy Mike. This monumental event took place in November of 1952 at the Enuatak Atoll in the Pacific. The blast was so powerful that it vaporized the entire island and left a crater over a mile wide. Not to be outdone, the Soviet Union conducted its own successful test of a hydrogen bomb a year later, in August of 1953. Named Joe 4, this test marked the beginning of a new era of nuclear weaponry. Now you may be wondering, what makes a hydrogen bomb so powerful? Well, unlike atomic bombs, which rely solely on nuclear fission, a hydrogen bomb, or thermonuclear bomb, to use its formal name, releases energy through both nuclear fission and nuclear fusion reactions. In simpler terms, it uses the energy from a primary fission explosion to trigger a secondary fusion reaction. It's like setting off a bomb within a bomb, resulting in an explosion of unimaginable scale. The development of the hydrogen bomb marked a significant milestone in the history of nuclear weapons. The world had entered an era of unprecedented destructive power, a power that continues to cast a shadow over international diplomacy and global security to this day. And thus, the world witnessed the birth of the most powerful weapon in history. Now, let's delve into the science behind a hydrogen bomb. A hydrogen bomb, or a thermonuclear bomb, is a weapon of immense power that harnesses the forces of both nuclear fission and fusion. To understand the mechanism of a hydrogen bomb, we need to look at it in two main stages, the primary fission stage and the secondary fusion stage. The primary stage is the fission bomb, often referred to as the trigger or primary. This stage is basically a smaller atomic bomb that uses nuclear fission to release energy. The material used for fission is typically uranium, 235 or plutonium 239. These materials undergo a chain of nuclear fission reactions where atomic nuclei split into smaller fragments releasing a substantial amount of energy. This is where our journey into the heart of a hydrogen bomb begins. Once the primary stage is detonated, it emits an intense burst of X-ray radiation. These X-rays then travel outward in all directions from the primary and this is where the secondary stage comes into play. The secondary stage consists of isotopes of hydrogen, usually deuterium and tritium. These isotopes carry one and two extra neutrons, respectively, compared to normal hydrogen. The X-ray radiation from the primary stage compresses and heats the secondary stage, creating conditions necessary for nuclear fusion. Nuclear fusion is a process where the nuclei of the hydrogen isotopes combine to form helium, releasing a massive amount of energy. The temperatures and pressures reached during this fusion process are akin to the conditions at the core of the Sun. What's even more fascinating is that some advanced hydrogen bombs may include additional stages, known as tertiary or quaternary stages, each involving further fusion reactions. These stages can significantly amplify the bomb's explosive power, potentially reaching multi-megaton yields. The total energy release from a hydrogen bomb is the sum of the energy from the primary fission stage and the secondary fusion stage. The majority of the energy comes from the fusion reactions, which are many times more powerful than the fission reactions alone. That's how the primary fission stage of a hydrogen bomb operates. But what happens after the primary stage? That's where X-ray radiation comes into play. The enormous energy unleashed during the primary stage gives birth to a powerful burst of X-ray radiation. This isn't your average dental X-ray. We're talking about an intense wave of energy that's eager to race outwards from the primary in all directions. Now, the role of this X-ray radiation is critical. It serves as the driving force to compress and implode the secondary stage of the bomb, which contains isotopes of hydrogen. Imagine the X-ray radiation as an invisible hand forcefully squeezing the secondary stage until the pressure and temperature conditions are just right. 
This compression and heating up of the secondary stage is an integral step towards achieving the end goal, nuclear fusion. Without the power of X-ray radiation, we wouldn't be able to create the extreme conditions necessary for the fusion reaction. This process sets the stage for the grand finale, the fusion reaction. Now, we arrive at the heart of a hydrogen bomb, the fusion reaction. This is where the magic, or rather the science, truly happens. The fusion process involves isotopes of hydrogen, typically deuterium and tritium. These isotopes are just like regular hydrogen, but with one and two extra neutrons, respectively. They exist in a gaseous state or may be incorporated into a solid material. The fusion process begins when the X-ray radiation from the primary stage compresses and heats the secondary stage, which contains these isotopes of hydrogen. Now, you might be wondering how hot it gets. Well, the conditions necessary for nuclear fusion to occur are extreme, similar to the conditions at the core of the sun. That's right, we're talking about temperatures in the millions of degrees and pressures millions of times greater than what we experience on Earth's surface. Once these extreme conditions are met, fusion occurs. The nuclei of the hydrogen isotopes combine to form helium. This might sound simple, but it's a process that releases a significant amount of energy. In fact, it's this fusion process that accounts for the majority of the energy release in a hydrogen bomb. But what happens to all that energy? Well, it doesn't just disappear. The energy released during fusion is carried away in the form of light and heat, contributing to the destructive force of the explosion. That's why a hydrogen bomb explosion is often accompanied by a blinding flash of light and an intense wave of heat. You see, the fusion process is the key to the immense power of a hydrogen bomb. It's the process that enables a hydrogen bomb to be hundreds or even thousands of times more powerful than an atomic bomb. And it's the process that makes a hydrogen bomb the most destructive weapon ever created by mankind. The fusion process is what truly makes a hydrogen bomb the force that it is. But did you know, some hydrogen bombs go even further. In the realm of advanced hydrogen bombs, we find the potential for tertiary or even quaternary stages. Each of these stages, mind you, involves further fusion reactions. The purpose? To significantly amplify the bomb's explosive power. Imagine a chain reaction, each link more potent than the one before. The primary fission stage ignites the secondary fusion stage, which in advanced bombs could then trigger a tertiary stage and possibly even a quaternary stage. Each subsequent stage uses the energy from the preceding one to instigate further fusion reactions. The result? An explosive power that scales exponentially, potentially reaching multi-megaton yields. In other words, these advanced stages are not just an addition, they are a multiplication, a compounding of destructive force. The power of a hydrogen bomb, already comparable to a miniature sun, can thus be amplified many times over. These additional stages push the boundaries of destructive power. So how much energy does a hydrogen bomb actually release? Well, the total energy release from a hydrogen bomb is a combination of the energy discharged during the initial fission stage and the subsequent fusion stage. The lion's share of this energy, however, springs from the fusion reactions. These fusion reactions are significantly more potent than the fission reactions alone. It's difficult to comprehend the sheer scale of this energy release. The explosive force of hydrogen bombs is often quantified in terms of megatons. To put that into perspective, one megaton is equivalent to the explosive force of one million tons of TNT. Now that's a staggering amount of energy. This energy doesn't just manifest as a massive explosion, but also as intense heat and radiation, which can cause widespread destruction and loss of life over a vast area. And that, my friends, is the terrifying power of a hydrogen bomb.